In this video, I will tell you the story of the real characters of the movie Untouchables and also about the moments that were changed in the movie. The real prototype of Driss looked significantly different from his on-screen portrayal. The producers intentionally made this inaccuracy because they were eager to cast Omar C in the main role. As a result, they decided to change the nationality of the character in the movie. The real Abdul Selu was born in Algeria. When the boy was four years old, his parents sent him to Paris to be raised by his then childless relative. For the inhabitants of North Africa this was nothing unusual, many low-income Algerians did this. They gave their sons to distant relatives to raise but kept their daughters for themselves. Just like in the movie after the foster mother had children of her own, Abdul got a lot less attention from her. No one controlled how he attended school or where he hung around all day. He was raised on the streets. Abdel's favorite pastime was stealing cameras from careless tourists at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. For a long time Abdel got away with it, because he was a minor, but soon after Abdel turned 18 he found himself in prison. After serving a year and a half in prison, Abdel was released and got a job at a pizza parlor. But he was so bored there that he did everything he could to get fired. He lived on unemployment benefits for two years without feeling any remorse. One day in December 94, the employment service sent another notice. Need an assistant to care for a paralyzed patient. For Abdul, this was a familiar routine. He would go to the location mentioned in the notice, obtain a signature of refusal, present it to the employment service, and then receive his unemployment benefit at the end of the month. This is where the first discrepancies between the movie and the real story begin. In the movie, Abdul begins to take care of Philippe alone, while in reality he also took care of Philippe's wife for a year. In the film, the origin of Philippe's substantial wealth is not addressed. This omission may be due to the fact that the movie was originally intended for French distribution where the family name Pozo di Borgo holds significant recognition. The unexpected global success of the film might not have been anticipated at the time of its production. Philippe Pozo di Borgo is a descendant of an ancient and noble Corsican family. French children study the life of one of his ancestors and history lessons in great detail, because he was a blood enemy of Napoleon himself. By the way in Corsica, the saying rich as Pozo still survives. Philippe inherited a large fortune from his wealthy ancestors, which included a company producing the very famous French Champagne Pommery. All through the first half of his life, Philippe was a major executive, and as a recreation he preferred extreme sports rather than aristocratic entertainment like opera. That's why he felt disgusted with life when he was cared for by caregivers who had two college degrees. Philippe was not used to being pitted, he was used to being a tough leader. In some sources you can find information stating that Philippe sustained his injuries because before the paragliding flight he was planning a significant layoff at his factory. During the flight, instead of being fully focused on flying, he was thinking about how to properly conduct a mass layoff. However, Philippe's book itself doesn't say a word about this, maybe because the speculation isn't true, or maybe because it makes him look bad. Anyway, the paraglider crashed. The doctors managed to save Philippe but due to the terrible trauma, his body was completely paralyzed and he fought for his life for two years in the hospital. In addition, a few years before these events, his wife Beatrice had been diagnosed with cancer. The house needed a man brave enough and even crazy enough to cope with the stiflingly painful atmosphere. This person was Abdul, who proved to be a real fighter and a strong man, able to give warmth even when everyone around him had given up. Abdul did not feel a strong connection with the employer at first. Initially, he accepted the job because he expected to steal something from the rich house. As correctly shown in the movie, on the first night of his employment he stole a Fabergé egg. In general in the film, all of Abdel's antics were shown very faithfully, but some of them were simply not included in the movie because Philippe was being cared for by him for 10 years and it is difficult to fit them into two hours of screen time. For example, Abdel invited a stripper to Philippe's godson's 18th birthday party. Philippe was beyond angry and said, would you dare do such a thing if it was birthday of your son? Abdel's reckless driving at the beginning of the movie was only the tip of the iceberg. At night Abdel used Philippe's cars. One day the police knocked on the door of the mansion and told Philippe that his Jaguar had been involved in an accident the previous night, but luckily no one was hurt. In the book Philippe says that Abdel at first tried to make a joke and said something like, 
I've always said that car is very dangerous. Then after a moment of hesitation, he adds, all right, it's my fault I didn't make the turn. Here are the keys. That's all that's left of it. Also in the movie, it was correctly shown that the character played by Omar C was a terrible womanizer. However, in the book, there is no mention of his inappropriate behavior towards Philippe's assistant. But it is described in detail that when Abdul abandoned another annoying girlfriend, Philippe delivered a heartfelt lecture to him, saying this, A woman is not a commodity or a thing. She must be worshipped and respected. You will realize this when you get married, then you will be ready to give your life for your chosen one. The only completely fictionalized episode in the movie is the correspondence between Philippe and the woman he later married. In reality, they met their future wives while traveling. In 2004, the two friends traveled to Morocco, with Philippe searching for a more suitable climate and Abdul eager for new experiences. In the hotel where they stayed, Abdul liked a young pretty receptionist named Amelie. According to Abdul when he first saw her, he felt an inexplicable sense of vulnerability, similar to what he experienced when he first met Philippe. Philippe and his second wife met on the same trip. They found themselves under the same shelter when they were hiding from the rain. Today Abdul and his wife Amelie and their three children live in the Algerian town of Jelfa. Philippe lived in Morocco with his second wife until his passing on June 1, 2023. Both Philippe and Abdul wrote best-selling autobiographical books that captivated millions of readers worldwide. They were highly sought-after speakers, sharing their inspirational life stories with audiences far and wide. Throughout their life journey, they remained close family friends until Philip's departure from this world. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you had a nice time.